What we have here is a Shimano 600 headset, one inch threaded. Definitely needs to be overhauled. So we will go over the process of overhauling and repacking the bearings after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I'm a garage shop. Taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the guy, and we have a headset that we need to crack open, and it's an old school, so I figured I'd fe feature it because you don't really see these, and just in case you come across a bike that you want to work on yourself, you may get some insights on this and check it out. Let's take a look. Okay, this is called a quill stem. It goes inside, right? So it goes in and wedges, and this has a lock nut, an adjuster race, and a race underneath here, and two cups sandwiched in ball bearings. So what we need to do is get this quill stem out of the way. First, how we do that? Well, this is a interesting one. You take your, you gotta loosen this bolt up, but that sometimes does not actually do the trick. In this case, it's metric, so this one's a six millimeter. You crack it loose, and what that does is sometimes when you loosen it up, it'll draw up a little bit. In this case, it does not, which is weird, but anywho, you take a, a rubber mallet and tap it lightly, and that should break that wedge loose. And that is the wedge right here. This is a split wedge versus a side wedge. So this one, you know, makes spans these two aluminum pieces out to uh, basically, you know, do its thing. Uh, so I gotta remember, I got cable routing here, which I need to address first. Is if I pull this out, it is gonna drop that cable. So be mindful. There's always extra steps, right? So what I'm going to do is take the sleeve so I can slide it through inside the frame so uh, we don't drop this. I don't want to be threading or try to thread this through. So you see it pop out on that side there. Then I'm safe. Okay. Woo. Yeah, almost had a catastrophe. <laughs> Whew, now it's free. Whew, I thought I freed it, but it apparently wasn't totally free. So we're going to set this aside. Right. So we're looking at this guy right here. Well, how do we get that off? We're using, going to check sometimes a 32 millimeter wrench, which is definitely the case. Ah, this guy is going to be tight. So what you'll need to do and this one, the wheel is off, so you got to get the wheel back on there. That sometimes helps with leverage. So I'm going to slide the wheel back into place so I can work against the wheel leverage. There you go. So I can get that lock nut to loosen up. Boy, it feels stiff. So this is going to take a couple turns here to get it to come free, break free. And sometimes this is easy, and sometimes these get kind of boogered up over time. And uh, this one feels pretty boogered up. Well, then we'll be cleaning these threads up a little bit. And keep in mind, this is an alloy bolt on a uh, chromoly steer tube steel. So sometimes those two materials like to fight each other. So what I'm doing is kind of opening that up. Got more threads. Uh, like so. Now, pulling that wheel in place still, I need to get the, I can get the spacers hopefully free. And these are keyed. There'll be a notch on these a lot of the times for the, for the one inch. Try not to lose my sleep. Yeah, boy. What I'm going to do is take this apart, try to spec the bearings and the races and everything. 
Ooh, this is being really stubborn today. Just one race. So working on these older bikes, you come across some serious uh, issues. Just have to work through. Oh, there's another one. Dropsies. Yeah, you definitely see me get my workout today, huh? What it could be is, uh, so there's one in here. I screw this down. I might be able to see it. And that I think is causing a problem. So making everything bind up. So I'm gonna gonna try to whoo, do that. <laughs> and now you can see what was happening. Apparently there's some debris inside there that's gumming up. Well, which will clean that up. I have basically it's a threaded guide made out of steel for cutting steer tubes. And that's good to throw on there to kind of go through and uh, get that all taken care of. So get the wheel out of the way. Hopefully my, ah, man, I still need the wheel in there. Still really tight. A lot of gunk in there. Not cool, man. Not cool at all. So this is probably about four threads deep. So that would be about eight half turns. Oop. Get that thing to, there we go. So you got your ball bearings in there. Then when I take the wheel off, it's all about coordination, right? And then we're dropping the fork out. And that has bearings on the race too. So we'll spread these all out, clean these up really good and inspect and go from there. Part of the eruption, there is more. More you say, push the more button, push it, push it. I dare you to push it. Once you push that button, you get more details about the video you are watching in addition to all the tools that I use in the shop as well as suggestion for improving your ride. In addition to, to help me provide advocacy in the cycling community, also links to other social media accounts as well as my website to find the products that I actually sell and other insights in the industry. Other videos linked below, extend your cycling experience here on YouTube. And now back to your original programming. Okay, cleaning, you don't want to go too crazy, but you definitely want to get a good degreaser on here. Cream that race up. What you're doing is inspecting it for any pits, which means there's little dings in there where the ball bearings lie. You want it to be smooth all the way around. Why is there, why would there be pits? Um, because the ball bearings are kind of stationary in one spot. So you hit those bumps or whatever, and it just kind of pokes at these races. Well, the problem is, is they don't move around like a hub or a crank set. So therefore it dings it up. The newer ones are those, you know, cartridge bearings, which kind of been a game changer. Uh, makes it a little bit easier and smoother. You don't have to repack them. You can just switch out those cartridge bearings. So clean it down the bottom side. But now let's take a look. Gotta get up and close and personal. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, let's look at the bottom. Okay. This one has a lot of dirt in there and we wanna get that all out. So, and that cup looks good so both the cup and the top race look very good so you don't have to replace that part we'll inspect the bearings and go from there so that's a good sign okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay all our stuff out so we got the top adjuster nut then we got the top race and then we're gonna pop this bearing out. 
or well first is going to be this seal and then we're going to these are caged. They can be loose bearings too. And what we really want to inspect is this guy. See if it has uh, been compromised. And we're looking for again any pits. And that looks good. And the threads look good on that. I'm going to take the seal, clean that up. And you can also put all these bits in the ultrasonic cleaner, which I'm probably going to do with the bearings. That way, now I know I can get the See all the gunk? Yeah, this is definitely needed to be done. I want to be able to get in between all that cage bits. And there is grease in there, so that's a good sign. Just really sticky, and we'll replace it with some good, good old bearing grease there. Okay, so, so far so good. And here on the fork, same kind of thing. You got a bearing and a seal, and we want to inspect this really good. This is what they call a crown race, because it goes on the crown of the fork. Typically, these are the guys that get pitted pretty good, and then back and forth. It's a case of where they, uh, over tightened it or it was loose, wasn't adjusted, and then then I got some good dirty gunk underneath here. Show. See if I'm, yeah. A little bit of scraping. We're gonna use a stronger cleaner. get into that. All right, then so clean this guy up. Give this guy a little squirt, kind of break up some of that grease. All right. Go back to that crown. See I and since I broke it up a little bit, it helps to clean that up. So now, put all these guys in this basket and out to the sonic cleaner. So while the parts are cleaning, I have this tool here, which is basically a cutting guide. I'm going to use it to chase the threads on the fork to make sure it's good and clean. And when you use something like this, you definitely want to use kind of like an oil versus a cleaner, like so. That way, when you're threading this through, since we get a couple threads in here that starts cleaning things up, I like to throw it in the vise so it's a little bit easier for me to give a little torque on that. And again, make sure there's good grease on there kind of help cut through and I want to go through the whole stack and this will definitely clean up those threads if you don't have those you'll have to do a thread die cut and not very many people will have those or very many shops will have those for a one inch and this is designed so if you need to trim down these old school forks threaded you can see ah, there we go and once I get it down there you can see how much more fluid and that is definitely cleaning up 
all of these 30 year old threads, 30 plus. And when you get down to the final few, you want to be very careful and go slow. Perfect timing. Ball bearings are probably all nice and clean. Like so. Super clean now, ready to be installed. Okay, so these guys are all ultrasonic clean. And you want to take a new rag and dry off everything. Make sure we got all those ball bearings cleaned up and dry. And once we're dry, we're ready to pack the bearings and put them back together. Let those dry for a little bit. And these unlucky are both the same. And if you don't have the cage, you just add one ball bearing and loose, loose ball bearings. If you can't find a replacement cage. There we go, let that dry. Okay, once they're dry, first put a nice coating of grease here. And the ball bearings, that cone, this is the ray, or the, uh, the ray's going to the cup. You want it to be like a bullet going in. So the ball bearings are going to be externally and that bullet portion goes through like so. Once you get that in there, so the ball bearings are rubbing against contact content so that not the race itself is up against the cup or the crown. So yeah, get a good liberal layer of grease on here. Like so, so it looks almost like it's embedded. That one's prepped and ready to go. Now we need to do the uh, bottom of the head tube, but remember we have to put this seal in. That goes on that one. That prevents water from going up in that direction. So we have this guy right here. That's where we're gonna put a layer of grease. That holds the ball bearing race in place like so. And we take another little amount, paint it in there. Paint brushes work really well. You can get a whole bunch of them at your local hardware store. This is actually my old art school brush that I had left over for painting. Fun fact, I went to art school. All right, and then we put this guy back in the place, which is your seal. Then we're ready to put the fork in place. And by doing that, we're gonna go like this. All right, so we're gonna go up direction, slide that into place. And we don't have to worry about greasing it because this is already pre-greased. Now we want to be very careful not to cross-thread this booger. Because this is alloy versus a steel. Sometimes they are a little stiff to begin with. And remember, we clean those threads up, so it should be a little better. See, it's kind of more fluid now, getting through that first little hump. And it goes right down onto that race. And this way, you can just Have it kind of finger tight and loose, and then you go and put in all these spacers. Okay, the reason why these shifted, that notch is just flat. It's not a true key cutout. 
there lies our issue with these spacers originally. So just kind of smash in there. Oop. There's one that's thinner. Ugh. Yeah. Let me see. It's, uh, DI is a little bit narrower. That one actually goes right down on top of embedded. Right inside there. Now that's probably why this headset. A little love tap, nothing too crazy, just to get to slide down and fit. And you hear it snap right in place, and then I have to add the other 400 of these. There you go. That's four. Three, two, that over so it's beveled up. One, and now this should be just at the right. So I unscrew it till I feel like I'm at the right space. is so old it's not as smooth as it should be. So this is like adjusting a hub. So you want it to be loose, smooth, but not loose and not notching. So a lot of times you can adjust it like in this state, but once you get the fork and the front wheel and all that good bits back on there, then you double check it. It's a, a two adjustment type thing just to make sure you got it. And the idea is see how it binds up when I tighten it down. Then you can back off this so it releases the pressure. And that's what you want to do for the final result. Make sure you uh, tighten this die down, then you double check it, back that off. So, it's almost like a hub speed. Woo! So, smooth, but not loose. So, there's a little knock in there. So, that means I need to tighten that down. And it'll be a lot easier when I have the wheel in place. And the fork on there. There we go. Headset 101, one inch headset threaded with a wheel stem. And once that's in place, you go ahead and you you can grease these inside. It's highly recommended. There's a lot of sweat sometimes when water goes down in there, it'll seize things up. Then you grease this bad boy back up. And there's a height limit line, which this one is over. So you want to make sure you get it down into that height lim limit line. At least there, if not lower. Then you go ahead and proceed to tighten that wedge. So it holds into place. Like so. We got ourselves a repacked headset. 101. Thanks for spending time with me in the garage. Until next time, have a great day.